Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. I haven't actually rehearsed this. This is just purely me uh, wanting to talk about Owncast and the process, demonstrate the process of deploying uh, Owncast on a Linux system. Uh, so um, I just want to really dive into it and discuss uh, you know, what Owncast really is and how uh, it can be used and what are the benefits of using something like Owncast. Uh, so just without further ado, I'm just going to actually dive straight into it. Uh, so guys, Owncast is a free and open source live video and web chat server. Uh, you know that you can actually use to live stream your your you know your events or your music sessions or really anything or your podcasts or really anything that you wanted to live stream. Now uh, you know currently the benefits like you know currently there are a lot of uh, live stream platforms such as Twitch, uh, YouTube. Uh, and so on and so forth um, and all of them you know they're, they're great they're great to pull in a crowd pull in traction but I think with owncast the benefits really are that you can actually have your own self-hosted system uh, and this is completely free of course um, and you know you're you're completely free to live stream anything you want the music you can really play any music you wanted uh, obviously you know I don't recommend not playing music that doesn't have copyright uh, you know copyrighted music however you know obviously you are free to do that uh, if you deploy a server like this uh, on your own uh, Linux system either in the cloud or even self-hosted at your home so uh, just to talk about this a little bit more uh, owncast um, you know it's it's a great platform it's a single video so you know it's like twitch uh, Twitch has multiple videos where people can stream uh, every single person has their own stream key and then you have multiple videos Owncast essentially is a single video and it has a chat as well uh, So just scrolling down a bit on Owncast, uh, Owncast of course it's self-hosted and independent It's got its chat and it works with uh, any of your live streaming softwares such as uh, OBS or uh, Prism Live uh, or Polypop Live for that matter, it will work with all that. Uh, the cool thing about Owncast is it does have a, a link to the Fediverse. So you can actually, so your live streams can reach a wider audience that are located on the Fediverse. Um, however, that is a feature that you can actually turn on or off. So if you wanted it completely private, you could actually just turn it off or you could have it on and then you would reach people uh, you know on places like Mastodon or other platforms within the Fediverse so that is really really cool uh, scrolling down a little bit more um, you know it, essentially you can stream right away it's very very simple and obviously you've got a whole bunch of people who've con been contributing to Owncast uh, and so what I'm gonna do right now is really I'm gonna get right into it and I'm going to just uh, work, work through the process of installing Owncast on a Linux system. Uh, the Linux system I'm going to use today is just going to be a really basic Raspberry Pi 4. So as you can see over here, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4. And this is the 4, four, gig, uh, four gig RAM version uh, of a Raspberry Pi 4. And what I'm doing is I've got an SD card that I've already um, uh, plugged into my computer. And I'm going to go through the process of uh, burning the SD card and um, installing um, the, the actual operating system on it and then going ahead and deploying Owncast on it. So uh, I'll go ahead and start off. Alright, so essentially I've got my SD card already plugged into my computer and uh, this SD card already has a version of, um, of Linux on it. But I'm going to go ahead and flash it again just so I could give you a demonstration. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and find a um, the Linux distribution. So I'm going to go to Raspberry Pi OS and uh, I'm just going to actually download the Raspberry Pi OS. And uh, we're going to go with um, Raspberry Pi OS with desktop and the reason I'm going to use a desktop and I've got a few reasons for that is because uh, With a desktop you can actually download the file see where the location is and it just does make things a bit easier uh, Even though obviously a desktop environment is definitely not needed for for this installation. So I'm going to go ahead and click download I'm going to just wait for it to download now and I will see you guys back once it's downloaded 
All right, great. So I've gone ahead and downloaded my Raspberry Pi OS, um, and I've actually uh, downloaded the 64-bit version, uh, just the one I prefer uh, for the Raspberry Pi 4. Mine's a 4 gig RAM, so it doesn't really matter if you install the 32 gig, 32-bit, or 64-bit version because it's only 4 gig ra of RAM that can be used. But anyhow, I've actually got the file downloaded right here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and flash my SD card uh, with a Raspberry Pi imager. Go ahead and select my OS. So now, if you're going to be using Raspberry Pi imager, you can actually go to custom and you can go to the downloads and that will be the image that you want to actually install. So I'm going to open that image. I'm going to choose my storage, which is my SD card. And I'm going to go ahead, before I click on write, I'm going to make a few changes to it. So I am going to enable SSH, so I can actually SSH into it directly. And I'm going to give it a login. I'm just going to call this Merge Lab, which is a username that I use quite often. I'm going to give it a password. Okay, that's good. I am actually going to configure LAN as well. I'm going to give it 2.4 and I'm going to type in my SSID. Okay, that's great. So I've given it the wireless as well. Okay, and I'm going to save this. And now I'm actually going to rewrite. So I'll be able to SSH directly. Yep, continue. Okay, so now it's actually going to go ahead and write my image to my SD card and I will actually come back and uh, talk to you guys when this is done. Okay, excellent. So I have gone ahead and burnt that uh, bookworm OS on my SD card and I've actually in inserted it into the Raspberry Pi. I've powered up the Raspberry Pi from a power bank. Doesn't need that much power. One of your mobile chargers can also power it up. That's what I've done. And I've plugged in the network cable into the Raspberry Pi and I've booted it up. So I've got the IP address, which is my internal IP address for the Raspberry Pi, which is 192.168.1.92. I'm going to actually use an application called PuTTY to actually connect to the Raspberry Pi. So that's the IP address that I've got. I'm connecting on port 22 and I'm going to SSH and I'm going to go ahead and connect. Now I've actually logged into it. Now I usually like to make a few changes here. So I'm going to make the appearance a lot larger. So you guys can actually see what I'm looking at. I'm going to go ahead and make it 16. So the login was Merge Lab and the password. All right, so I've gone ahead and logged in. Now, before I actually do anything else, I'm going to actually update the system. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sudo apt update. And while that actually does an update, I'm going to go ahead and, um, yep, that's done an update already. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do an upgrade as well. Get all the packages up to date. Okay, so while that's actually doing an upgrade, I'm actually going to go ahead and go to owncast and we can go ahead and go to the quick start now in the quick start guide we're gonna have a look so there are a few options here um, I want to manually install oncast myself install it on a hosting provider so on and so forth and I'm gonna actually go ahead and say I want to manually install oncast myself now you can actually use a quick installer script but in this case because I'm installing it on a Raspberry Pi which has got the Debian a bookworm image on it. I'm actually going to go ahead and download a specific release for an ARM device. It's t telling me the link is located here, so I'm actually going to open this up in a new tab. And if we scroll down, we will find the assets. And um, so, in this case, what I'm actually going to do, and this is the reason why I did get the desktop is I'm actually going to go ahead and connect to my Raspberry Pi over um, VNC. Now, 
even before I do that, I need to actually enable VNC on my Raspberry Pi. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead, go back here, and this is still upgrading. So what I'm going to do is I will let this upgrade and I will come back and speak to you all then. Okay, so now that my Raspberry Pi has completed its upgrade, what I'm going to do is start the process of installing Owncast on this Raspberry Pi. So in order to do this, and I, there are a few ways to do this actually, you can do it completely from command line, but I'm actually going to use a little bit of an easier method that I find uh, using uh, by VNCing into the actual Raspberry Pi box. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So in order for me to VNC into the box, I do need to enable VNC on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm actually going to go do that right now. So there is a command that you can actually go into the settings directly from command line. And I believe that is sudo raspi dash config. That takes me directly to uh, the configuration of that Raspberry Pi. So the few things that we can do over here, and I will actually go ahead and do them. So uh, before I do that, I would like to go to Interface Options and go to VNC, and I'm going to enable it. All right, excellent. So VNC has now been enabled. I'm going to go OK. I'm going to have a look at a few of the other settings. VNC resolution. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. Um, eh. Could actually bump it up to 1080p, which is great. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, do it. Update this tool to the latest version as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll let that update. That shouldn't take too long. Okay, so it's brought me back here. And I think that's really all I need to do right away on the tool. So I'm going to click on finish. And now, while this is SSH'd into it, I'm going to open up my VNC Connect. And I'm going to connect to the Pi using VNC. Okay, great. So now I'm actually connected directly into the Pi. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open up this page because this is what I need. To, I need to actually download the, the asset and I'm going to go ahead and copy the address of this page. Go back to my Pi. I'm going to open up um, Explorer or well, not Explorer exactly, Chromium. And let Chromium open up. And I'm going to go ahead and browse to that page. Same thing. I'll scroll down till I get to the assets. Now, when we get to the assets, we want to make sure we do, do download the right assets. So um, the asset, since we have installed the 64-bit version, I'm actually going to go ahead and download the Linux ARM 64-bit file. So I'm going to click on that. And that's going to go ahead and download. We've got that downloaded already, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and make a directory to to install the oncast files into the system. So I'll go back to my desktop for the Raspberry Pi. And I can actually open up a folder. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to created in documents and I'm going to just create a new folder called owncast great okay and I'm actually going to go ahead to, down, doc, to the downloads I'm actually going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here Okay, and now I'm going to extract the files into this directory. So there we've got owncast. Okay, great. So now that we've unzipped uh, the owncast zip file that we downloaded, 
and we've unzipped it directly into the same folder. So now that we know our path, path is right up here. So we know that we've actually got a folder called owncast in the documents folder and the owncast um, file is right here. The executable file is right here in this owncast folder. So now in order to run the actual server, the web server, what I'm actually, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to putty and I've got the putty session open over here. And what I do, and I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, so if I'm in Raspberry Pi, I would go CD and documents. So I would go in the documents folder. I can do an LS and there we've got the own cast folder right there. So I can go again, CD and just a capital O should be fine in a tab. And that would be owncast and do another LS. And now we can see the actual application, which is owncast. So in order to run this application, I can go um, full stop backslash owncast. And I can just do a tab. And when I do that, it's actually going to run the web server on port 8080. So as you can see now, our web server is listening on port 8080 and we can configure the server by visiting admin. All right, great. So now what I want to do is configure the server. So I'm going to reach the server. So the server IP is 192.168.1.92 port 80 slash admin. I've already had it before, so it's just going to automatically browse it. And it's asking for a username and password. Now, by default, owncast log login or username is admin. So I'll go ahead and type that in. And the password is abc123. That's a default password. And now we're into the server. Now, this is obviously a fresh server, and uh, it's got a few things that we can configure. Uh, one of the main things that I'm going to start by configuring is um, I'm actually going to go to configuration and I'm going to go to general and here's where you can change the name of the server. So I'm going to call it merge lab server. Okay, great. Now I'm going to save that. I'm going to update that, that one and that's successful. Great. Now the one of the main things I want to actually have a look at is make sure that the RTMP address is specified. So if you go to home, the home page, you will actually see that the stream URL is specified right here. Now, since this is a, a server, the stream URL is the IP address of the server of the Raspberry Pi currently, which is 192.168.1.92. And it's listening, it's RTMP, so 1935. So this is the stream URL, and this is the one that I would actually pop into a software such as OBS. So I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to drop it into my OBS. So I'm going to go ahead and switch. Now I'm in OBS, and I'm going to go to my settings, my stream, and I'm going to paste the address right here. Right now, I'm going to apply and OK. Now, back on the main page, we can view our stream key, uh, which is right here. So we can go to stream keys and we can copy our stream key. If you wanted to actually view it, you can. And that is ABC123, which essentially as a default is the same as the login, as the password when you log in. So I'm going to hide this again and I'm going to copy that stream key and we're going to go back to OBS go back to settings stream and I'm going to paste that stream key right there and I'm going to apply okay great so now I've got my stream URL the RTMP URL and my stream key go back to owncast server setup so we've got that going and now we can actually go to video. Now in video by default, it will actually have a stream output set up already for you over here. Now what I've done, because I've done this before, I would go to edit and I'd go to advanced. Now in advanced, what we want to do is 
we wanna rather than having setting a resolution over here and a video bitrate I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi that's 4 gigs of RAM so a little machine such as a Raspberry Pi is not really enough to successfully encode a 1080p video so Owncast has a feature called video pass-through and video pass-through lets me send something to Owncast and it will not encode it it will just let whatever's coming in just let it pass through to the player and I'm gonna enable video pass through on it will give you a warning just to let you know that there are risks and it may not work that well and to read the documentation but that's okay we've done it before and we know it does work so I'm gonna say yes that's fine and as you can see as soon as I did enable video pass through it has disabled all my settings over here because essentially we don't require any more and it's just gonna let the video pass through alright and I'm actually gonna name this I'm gonna name this as video pass through okay so we've got video pass through right here okay so one actually let me so I'll just name it as video pass because it's not letting me actually put in all those characters that's fine and make sure you press OK and that's done now the latency I'm gonna leave it at medium latency which is actually default and we can always play with that later on okay so now I'm gonna go back to my OBS and in OBS I'm gonna start my stream okay so it's telling me to double check my stream key go ahead and do that ABC one two three and alright so now I can see that we are streaming at uh, 3000 approximately 3000 kbps and if I go to the home page on owncast as you can see it is receiving a stream of 3000 kbps 30 fps at 1080p with uh, the audio at 160 kbps so this is the configuration that I have set in OBS so that is great so we are receiving that now how do we actually watch the stream now in order to watch the stream right now we're in the admin panel to watch the stream I can open up a new tab and I could go to the address of owncast which is right here it's actually 92 there port 8080 oh okay so it does say that there's an issue with the video and I do believe I know what this is so I'm gonna go ahead and stop my stream in OBS there we go stop my stream in OBS and I'm gonna go back to video I'm gonna go to advanced settings you need to make sure that this is set to default and that's great I don't see what else would be wrong with it so we've got that video pass through going go back home go back to OBS I'm gonna start my stream again And there we go we're streaming and so this is quite good um, this is essentially we're streaming from OBS there we go sorry yep I'm streaming from OBS into owncast which is running on a Raspberry Pi and the reason why I can actually get this quality is because I have got pass-through enabled um, so that's really it folks there there's a lot of things that you can actually do with owncast uh, and I'll actually talk about that in my next video uh, so yeah thanks for thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching the video I really appreciate the like and subscribe that would be really appreciated and that will go a long way for me thank you all bye bye